We begin by praising Allah and our praise is never enough. And then we thank Allah and our thanks is never enough. And then we remind ourselves we're not made for this world. This is not our home. We're only visitors. We're only passing by. We can't take this stuff with us to the grave, to our true home. This world is the home for the homeless. This world is the home for the homeless. Our true home is over there. Our true home is in the next life. And the one who collects has no intellect. We don't collect this stuff that we can't take. How can we attempt to, 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 to attain the vanishing? We're seeking the vanishing. It's all going to vanish. What kind of wisdom is that? And then we warn ourselves that we are returning to our Maker. Each and every one of us, we are on a journey, we are on a train, all of us returning to our Maker. And one day we will, we will be reunited with our Maker, gone from this world, gone from this abode. After we die and we are resurrected, and then there is paradise and there is the other place. May Allah protect us. Sometimes we forget that we're on the same team. You know, us Muslims, sometimes we forget that we're on the same team. And it can come from a, from a good place. It can come from passion, from good intentions, from love, from excitement, from eagerness, from zealousness, from dedication. But we forget we're on the same team. So we end up hating and hurting each other, even though we're on the same team. It's ironic. It's ironic that God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who created us and designed us, commanded us to be with each other, commands us to be with Allah, the Messenger of Allah, and with the mu'mineen and the believers. And then He designed us to be naturally annoying to each other. Show me a husband or wife that never annoyed each other, although they love each other. Show me a, husband, a father and son, or a father and daughter, or mother and daughter, that never annoyed each other, although they love each other, although they care for each other. What is this paradox of life? These paradoxes, God created, it's, it's, God, it's interesting that God created, we're the, one of the only creatures and jinn that have free will, choice. And then God says, I gave you free will, but align your will with my will. A paradox of life. We're created to be with, annoying to each other. We made you to each other a tribulation, a difficulty, a trial. Are you going to be patient? And your Lord is watching you. And this paradox of getting along. This paradox of getting along. Right? And there's a solution to that. How can we achieve it? And it's so heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking when you see two passionate people who are passionate for the same cause, for the same cause, and because of their passion for the same cause, they have animosity towards each other. Who is the winner? Shaitan. Who is the winner? Shaitan. Be, and it's ironic because of their passion and love for Allah, because of their passion and love for this cause, they end up having animosity towards a fellow Muslim. Where is the wisdom in that? How are we being duped by the devil? The, the devil, Iblis, in a hadith of our Prophet وسلم, an authentic hadith, says he despaired, Ya'isa, he's despaired to be worshipped by those who pray. So then what did he do? Because he's not going to be pray worshipped. What did he pursue? I'm going to sow di division and discord and hatred between them. That is my tactic. That is my tool. Let me get the Muslims fighting each other. Let me get the Muslims hating each other. Fighting over anything. Fighting over the carpet in the prayer. Fighting over the front row. Fighting over the money. Fighting over the parking lot. Fighting over the love. Fighting over the uncle. Fighting over the brother. Fighting over the infant. Anything. It doesn't matter. Let me just separate their hearts. Let me separate their hearts. <laughs> and then shaitan is successful and we are the losers. 
And then, you know, the worst part is we hide behind a principle. <laughs> we hide behind a principle. No, I, I'm doing this for the sake of such and such principle, and therefore I'm going to sever you. Sulman qata'ak, wa'ati man haramak, wa'afu amman zalamak. Connect the one who severs you, give the one who's greedy to you, and pardon the one who harms you. And if you connect the one who severs you, al wasil wa salahullah. If you connect the one who severs you, Allah will connect you. If you give the one who's greedy to you, God will give you. If you pardon the one who harms you, God will pardon you. It's just so hurtful. The irony of having passion for a cause that causes the discord between the hearts. Passion for the cause that causes discord between the hearts. And remembering that we are on the same team. Shaitan is most successful, he sends out his minions. Shaitan sends out his minions, they come back and report to him, and he's training them, and they come back and he says, what did you do? He says, oh, I made, I made, my, I made my, my human, my man, because everyone has their own dedicated Satan that whispers to them. So they report back to their chief, their chief Satan, they report back. And so they report back and they say, what did you do? Oh, I, I made him say so-and-so, look at so-and-so, do so-and-so. You did nothing, you did nothing, you did nothing. I made them separate. Ah, anta, anta, come here. Yes, yes, come here. That's the, the shaitan, the shaitan separates, the Muslim unites. And so if we help with separating, we're doing shaitan's work. We're doing shaitan's work. And then we have this, there's this thing, you know, it's shaitan, we said, he, his job is to separate because he gave up on being worshipped. He's most successful when he separates. And then we have this thing in modern times called cancel culture. I don't know if, if we've ever heard about it. Cancel culture. It's such a wild idea <laughs> that someone who has been has been so solid or so good to me or, or so wonderful for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years, and then they trip up, they do something wrong, you're canceled. You're canceled. They say God gives and forgives, people get and forget. People get for 30 years and then you mess up, okay, bye-bye, you're canceled. And, and cancel culture is shaitan culture. Why? Iblis was, was the clo one of the, the closest in the unseen realm or of the closest in the unseen realm. <laughs> and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam, blew into him from his spirit, commanded the angels and Iblis to bow. The angels bowed, Iblis didn't bow. And Iblis canceled Allah <laughs> subhanahu wa ta'ala. The uncancelable, of course but canceled him from his quote-unquote spirit or his heart. Now the question is, do we do that? What can we do? We come every Friday, guys, ladies and gentlemen, we come every Friday to become more aligned with the divine. We're not satisfied with our spiritual state. The fool is the one satisfied with his state, spiritual state. You can be satisfied with your financial state, with your salary, with your career. Of course, we can grow bigger, but to be satisfied with our spirit, you can be satisfied with your car, satisfied with the looks that Allah gave you, satisfied with your home and your square footage. But to be just satisfied, I'm good enough with my religion, my spirituality. That's from foolishness. And so, shaitan canceled, quote unquote, forever, forever. You're forever out of my heart. You're forever out of my life. I'm forever not going to be close to you. Cancel culture is shaitan culture. Right? And so what can we do? What can we learn? How can we not fall victim to this? How can we be careful to not fall victim to this and give victory to Allah over our lower nafs? How can we bring unity in our sphere of influence? How can we bring our hearts closer even when we disagree? Even when we disagree, how can we keep the hearts close even when we disagree? Seek forgiveness from Allah. He forgives all sins.
بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. There's three ways in which we can keep our hearts close, even when we disagree. And we might have valid, legitimate disagreements. We might think that person is doing something haram, harmful. We might disagree. But what, how can we maintain the ummah? How can we maintain the ummah? And so there's three ways. And they are the body, the mind, and the heart. The body, the mind, and the heart. How we are composed. Bismillah. So the, it, the mind, number one, intellectual humility. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he was asked by one of his students, and he was asked, he said, they asked him, they said, in, in your opinion, if praying behind someone who, whose nose bled, you can't pray, they lost their wudu. In Imam Malik's opinion, you can pray behind them even though, even though his, his nose bled. Would you, O oh Imam Ahmed, would you pray behind someone who, who had a bloody nose? And Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal says, Who am I to not pray behind Imam Malik? <laughs> who am I? I have a dalil and he has a dalil. I have a legitimate opinion and he has a legitimate opinion. Who am I? to not pray behind him. Imam al-Shafi'i would say, I believe that my opinion is correct with the possibility of being wrong. And I believe his opinion is incorrect with, with the possibility of being right. <laughs> the intellectual humility. We know this, the beautiful story when our Prophet ﷺ commanded the companions to not pray Asr until they get to Bani Quraiza. And the group, the companions, they left. And while they were traveling, the sun was about to set. The Asr prayer is about to culminate, about to end. And so they said, let's pray Asr. And then the other group, they said, no, our Prophet ﷺ commanded us to pray when we arrive. So the group that said, no, we should pray because, you know, he, he, only, meant, he only meant to rush, to be quick, to hurry. So some of them prayed and some of them didn't pray. Some of them took the literal and some of them took the, 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 the figurative. And then they went, they disputed and they went to our Prophet ﷺ. And they shared with him the story. And they said, this is what happened. And some of us prayed Asr and some of us didn't pray Asr. And what did our Prophet ﷺ do? He accepted both of them. Allah, there is more than one correct way. Al-Mukhtalaf fihi la yunkar. A fiqhi principle that disagreed upon should not be condemned. If it's disagreed upon by scholars and valid opinions, then we don't condemn it. Intellectual humility. This is number one. Number two is, is physical proximity. The body. The body, we know, let's say I disagree, my brother hurt me, my brother neglected me, my sister hurt me, she didn't invite me to this, she said something that just stung me in my heart, or she didn't say something that stung me in my heart. Ah, how can she do that? And this is life. We just said the ayah in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ fitna. We made you to each other a tribulation. It's gonna happen. We know it's going to happen. And so how do we prepare? Three days, you have three days only. Three days only to be upset. And then, then we begin with decisional forgiveness and that is followed by emotional forgiveness. Decisional forgiveness is where you maintain the physical proximity. You continue to, the hadith says where more than three days where you see each other and you turn away and you turn away and you don't say salam to each other and you don't say salam to him, you don't say salam to him. And the first one to say salam is the better and they get more reward. And then shaitan fails. The only winner to an argument is shaitan. Because even if you quote unquote won the argument, you lost the heart of the arguer. You lost the heart of the arguer. <laughs> Another fool, according to Imam al-Ghazali, is the one who argues, the one who argues, 
knowing that the person his heart is not going to accept what I'm saying. Satan made a fool out of you. Satan made a fool out of me. I'm arguing even though I know their heart is not going to accept it. What kind of fool is that? And so for three days, so physical proximity, also with the body, what do we do? We say, we said God commands us to be with each other. And then God tells us we're, we're naturally going to, to frustrate each other and, and, and hurt each other. What do we do? We lower our wings. وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنْ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Lower your wings. What does that mean? What does it mean to lower your wings? That means you are correct, you are right, but nonetheless, you lower yourself. And the one who is correct and stops an argument gets a house in the highest place of paradise. The one who's arguing and stops arguing and they are right, gets the house in the highest levels of paradise. And the one who stops arguing and they're not correct gets a house in paradise. <laughs> Either way. And so, with the physical proximity, three days only after that, just like, just like when someone passes away, may Allah protect and give us healthy and happy lives, inshaAllah. But we can only stop life for three days. After that, we go back to life. After that, we go back to life. We go back to work, three days. Our heart can maintain some sadness. Our ears can maintain some tears. But we go back to life. Because the inward will follow the outward. The decisional forgiveness will be followed by the emotional forgiveness. Your heart will follow your body. So yes, I'm upset with you. Yes, you hurt me. But I'm still going to invite you to my home. I'm still going to come to your home. I'm still going to smile at you. I'm still going to shake your hand. Who's going to take care of the ummah if we don't? If we just point our fingers at that country and that leader and that and this, but then we, and then if we separate from our own brother, our own cousin, our own uncle, our own neighbor, then who are we to point fingers? Who's going to take care? We are the ummah. The person we're waiting for to elevate the ummah is sitting right here. It's me and you. In Allah, Give victory to Allah. He'll give victory to us. Take care of Allah. He'll take care of you. And then the third way, where we said intellectual humility, physical proximity, and heart affinity. And heart affinity. And the heart, وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ Allah says, don't forget the good between you. Don't forget the good that transpired between you. Don't forget all that goodness. Don't forget all, the, all those graces and those gentleness. People get and forget. Just cancel culture. And then, oh, we just hold that sentence. We hold that sentence that, that stabbed us. And we forget the thousand other sentences. We forget the thousand other moments. We forget the thousand other minutes, the thousand other invitations. We forget the thousand other years. But that one sentence that, that stabbed me, that stung me, I can hold it in my mind a thousand times. And forget all the rest. Cancel culture is shaitan culture. We don't do that. We forgive. We forgive each other. Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu was advised and commanded in the Quran to pardon and forgive one of the men who slandered his daughter and continued to give him money who slandered his daughter and hurt her for weeks and over a month and it became a big thing in the community. Forgive him. Forgive him. So how about, can we forgive each other? Can we forgive each other? Don't forget the good that transpired between you. And one of my favorite stories of the man that came in the mosque, the man that came in the mosque of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and started to urinate in the sacred mosque. And the companions got up to jump why are you soiling the mosque? And our dear Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, let him finish. Let him finish urinating in the mosque. Why? Because you can clean the, you can clean the carpet in five minutes, but his heart might not heal for five years. You can clean the carpet in five minutes. 
I'd rather, they say, break the walls of the Kaaba than the heart of my brother. So where are we? Where are we when it comes to the issue of Gaza and Palestine? When it comes to these issues, when the issue of these political issues come, whether it's at this issue or that issue, and this person took that side or this side or this side, and we all are coming from the same love and the same passion, and we're on the same team. We're on the same team, and then we hurt each other, and then we bring each other down and bring shaitan up. So what is that? And so this is an invitation. This is an invitation to see the bigger picture of we are on the same team, having intellectual humility, intellectual humility, having physical proximity, and having the heart affinity. That's our job as Muslims, to see us as one unit, one team, and it starts in the family. Anyone sitting here thinking, yes, such and such continent on the other side of the world should unite with such and such continent in the other hemisphere. Such and such president should unite with such and such. That, inshallah, that will happen when we, when we do that at home. When we do that in the micro, Allah will bring it in the macro. But we start with ourselves. If I'm a son, I'm going to do it with my father. If I'm a daughter, I'm going to do it with my mother. And yes, it's going to hurt, but we do it for God. We do it for Allah. Al-mu'amala ma'Allah. And then we start to see how the hearts will melt. How, how, the, how the distress is diffused. صل من قطعك واعط من حرمك واعف عن من ظلمك The three highest levels of character. And these issues are inevitable and they are forever because that's how this world is designed. Even the, the, best, the best generations, the companions disagreed. Radiallahu anhum. We disagree. We have different temperaments. And we have some people like flight, some people like fight, some people have, are, are strong and hot, tempered, are, and hot tempered and energy, and some are calm and soft. And that's okay, but we keep our hearts connected. And we don't let shaitan be victorious. <laughs> Let me separate them. That's his strategy. And so it's our job to go back and revisit. And anyone that we might hold some grudges against, we have to, we have to go and clean that away from our heart. And, and the first step is to make dua for that person. The first step, if you have some hatred, some difficulty, someone hurt you, step number one right now, make dua for that person. Make dua for that person right now to let your heart sting and hurt and melt away those grievances. And the man who walked in the mosque, the Prophet ﷺ said that, you want to see a man of paradise? The man who's going to walk in the mosque. And so this man walked in the mosque. And so then he walked. And then this man went to him. He said, can I, he said, can I sleep over for three days? And he slept over for three days observing him. Why is this man a, a man of paradise? And he observed him for three days and he didn't see anything special. So he told him, he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, you're a man of paradise, but I didn't see that you do anything special. Special, what do you do? He said, you know, I don't know. But you know, before I go to bed, before I go to sleep, if there's anyone that hurt me, if there's anyone that I'm feeling hatred or anger against, I forgive them. And he's a man of paradise. And so we start right here, right now. And this ummah, right now, it can have a ripple effect, inshallah. Ameen. 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 And this is where the Ummah begins, the children of Adam, right here. Right here in your heart, in my heart, in this masjid, in this musalla. And then it goes and we bring the Ummah together. And it's a sadaqah to bring people together. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayu aladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim. Fil alameen innaka hamidun majeed. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار
يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما Oh Allah, oh Allah, we turn to you, we ask you to give victory to the Ummah. Oh Allah, we ask you to protect us from the hellfire. Oh Allah, we ask you to give us your paradise, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask you to soften our hearts. Ya Allah, soften our hearts. Ya Allah, soften our hearts. Ya Allah, let us, ya, ya Allah, let us be victorious over shaitan. Let us be victorious over our anger. Ya Allah, let us, let us see silence as a strength, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, let us connect with the one who pushes us away. Let us be generous to the one who is greedy to us. And let us pardon the one who harms us. Ya Allah, unite the ummah. Unite the hearts of the ummah even if our strategies differ. Ya Allah, unite the hearts of the ummah even if our strategies differ. Ya Allah, unite the hearts of the ummah even if our strategies differ. Ameen, ameen, ameen. And protect our scholars and our institutions. And we ask you for everything beautiful and everything everything good that our, that our dear Prophet Muhammad وسلم, asked you for. And we seek protection from every harm that he sought protection from. And Ya Allah, take care of our parents, take care of our mothers, take care of our fathers, whether they are alive or in their graves. Take care of them outwardly and inwardly, Ya Allah. Be pleased with them and grant them paradise without judgment. Amen.